What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video and uh, today what we're going to do is go over what my arrow setup is going to be for this year and we're going to build it out fully kind of running through the steps. In past years I've kind of switched between like a four millimeter and a five millimeter uh, mostly because of lighted knocks. I really like lighted knocks. Um, I run these nocturnals, not the universal fit. Oh, these X ones right here. I run these nocturnal X knocks in uh, in a five millimeter arrow, but I really do like four millimeter arrows for like all shooting, uh, honestly. But I am going to give it a shot this year and run five millimeter arrows the entire year. These are the RIP TKO by Victory um, 300 spine V1. So thousands straightness. 300 spined. Um, these TKOs are unbelievably strong. I've shot these for like three years now. Uh, I cannot say enough how strong they are. It's actually scary. I've shot so many things and the arrow does not break. It might have the insert bend or, you know, the point bend, but you take them off and the carbon's not broken. So unbelievably strong, relatively light. Um, so you can get um, just a really good arrow set up all around out of these good knocks. I, I, I don't want to sell these. I'm not trying to sell these. This is what I use, but it's because I've shot a lot, a lot of stuff and I just keep landing back on these. But I'm going to give the RIP TKO, so the five millimeter. The RIP is the five millimeters. The VAP is the four millimeter. I'm going to give the RIPs a try solely throughout this entire year. Um, I'm going to be running 50 grain insert in the front. Uh, just because you don't need a lot of weight. And then I'm going to be running Be Real Arrow Wraps by Boning. And then what I'm going to be running is, this is something new. This is the Black Sky Vein by Boning, the Be Real Edition. So this is actually a X vein made out of their heat material. So it's stiff, it's a stiffer vein. I've been shooting them, testing them, and actually have really, really been liking them. Um, they're a little bit more rigid, uh, you know, f they're not as loud, I think, because they are a little bit more rigid. They hold their form factor a little bit better. Um, they also, you know, they say it's stiffer veins, they kind of open up the wound channels a little bit. So a couple good things about just a stiffer vein in general, um, and we have that here in this Black Sky Be Real vein. So these are available now on the website if you're interested in getting these, um, and that is like the X vein cut. So what we are going to do is I'm gonna just build this one start to finish for you guys all the way down from cutting to fletching and all that jazz. So I have, gosh, I think I left that at the same setting. We're gonna roll the dice on it because I have my other ones buried in a bow case. So I have this uh, D-cut arrow saw by Lancaster Archery Supply. I did this such a long time ago as an unboxing and it is still kicking. It's a fantastic saw, nothing's wrong with it. It's been great, gone through a couple blades because I've been reckless and have broke them. But besides that, it's great. There's a foot pedal that comes down low right here. So you can just press that foot pedal, keep it always set up. And if you have a tight space, it actually collapses a little bit. So you can kind of mark different spots. It's micro adjustable. I'm not trying to sell this again. It's just a good saw if you guys want to look it up. It is the D-cut arrow saw. Okay, so we're going to place a knock here on the right side. And then we're going to slightly move this forward and spin. So all you're going to do, move it forward until it cuts. And then you're going to spin all the way around. I did a little bit more, you saw I cut, spun around until it cut all the way, and then I just spun a little bit more, just in case there's any little burrs or anything. I didn't see that there were, but you always gotta double check. Uh, this is the G5 ASD flip, but it's an arrow square, oh, ASD, arrow squaring device, nice. Arrow squaring device, um, it's like this little diamond cut sandpaper stuff on here. Really robust. You can actually mount it to a desk, which I actually should mount this to. But what you do is you place it on here and you add some pressure, downward pressure, and you spin. And this is essentially squaring the arrow. It's making sure that it's nice and square at a 90 degree angle <clears throat> so that your insert sits flush against there 
and this really isn't an accuracy thing because your point is always going to be straight based off of the inside of your arrow because it's a cylinder that rubs alongside of it. It's not based on how it sits on the actual ledge per se, but it's going to be stronger. If you have good even contact on there, it's going to be a lot stronger. It's going to prevent cracking or anything like that. So if you do all your arrows, just go ahead and rub them through. And then what I like to do is just bounce them off, rub them off, and that's it. I do not like to actually clean the inside of my arrows. Um, the wise Jesse Brawwater one time told me that he actually prefers the little bit of carbon dust in there to act like as an extra adhesive to grip on to the carbon. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's fairy dust, but ever since he told me that, I haven't done it, and I feel like there really wasn't a change one way or another in my point staying in. So, I don't know. Might be some fairy tale stuff. So, next what I'm gonna do, and I like to do this in batches of like a dozen or six. So I'm gonna cut all of them until I'm done. And then I'm going to arrow square all of them until I'm done. And then I'm going to do wraps and so on and so forth. But we're just blowing through this with one arrow to show you my process. But typically, I would do a full dozen, one at a time. And you don't wanna do, you don't really wanna do a single like I'm doing, but I'm gonna finish these, but a single to like, let's say you broke one arrow and, and kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna like make one. You can do that, but it kind of, it, it allows opportunity for errors or flaws or variances. I like doing them all in batches because you never know if you actually change your arrow saw or, or change your fletching jig or you just never know. So these are um, our B-Real arrow wraps uh, by Boning. Uh, they're actually underrated. Something that Boning does that makes all of their stuff be very adhesive. Some companies out there, they actually, um, their arrow wraps have a different coating on them and it kind of creates some weird ad adhesion. So something, some magical fairy dust that they do on their arrow wraps where I've never had a problem. And if I do have something come off, it's because the entire wrap like ripped off and the fletching ripped off. Like if you're Robin Hood an arrow and it like bounces off or does something weird. So awesome adhesion out of these wraps and I've been loving them. What you're gonna do to install these wraps is actually have this little foam uh, board. It's actually the bottom of my Husky drawer. I just took it out because I was trying to find something. I don't really like using a mouse pad because it's not big enough, but this bottom of this Husky pad is like super wide. So it does really nice. You can see that there is an extra gap spacing on this top side. It's to allow for four millimeter, five millimeter, and six millimeter arrows to all work with one wrap. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that thicker side towards you. So rolling into it, no matter if you have a four or five or six millimeter arrow, it's gonna work. But we just allow that little gap in the logo. So you're gonna put that side towards you. You're gonna lay that down. Now that I've touched it, it is <laughs> stuck to my finger. So we have the B-Real logos are over here and the thicker side is on the bottom. What you're gonna do is you're, I'm gonna bring this light down further. A really good light is very nice while doing this. So I'm gonna line this up and then you apply even pressure, start to roll. And then once you get around to this side, I like to just swipe once with my finger to make sure it's nice and applied. Then you're gonna do that. And then I just like to roll it a couple times and then review your work, make sure you're good and you are good to go. So now, um, and you notice I didn't do any prep work on that arrow. Like um, you can clean it off with um, like denatured alcohol. Um, but these are fresh arrows. There's really no need to if you're like refletching some arrows So you just stripped them all off You can wipe it off with like a paper towel and some denatured alcohol just to get some extra stuff on but these wraps stick really really good It's they're not as sensitive as what like a vein would be so for these what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fletch these with uh, the last chance uh, Vein master pro I go back and forth between a bits and burger and a vein master pro uh, I didn't use this one for a while because it was much easier to use a bits and burger, but I kind of noticed um, some slight inconsistencies in the bits and burger to where um, There would be like two fletchings a little bit closer to one and a couple times I was like ah, maybe that was me not clicking it in all the way um, and I think honestly I might have a bad I think this unit might be something wrong with it. So I'm gonna, but I'm not bashing or anything. I think I just need to do some TLC on the unit or um, just get a, a, a unit all together. But I have this Vein Master Pro. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna switch and use this this year for, for my hunting arrows. So how this works is uh, you have this little device right here that you're gonna put the arrow in. 
spin it, and then you're going to clip it in to the knock right there. And you always want to make sure that that is in a click motion. Then you have this arrow stopper thing, which essentially always makes sure that there is tension back against the knock, which is really nice that you don't accidentally fletch the arrow with it out like that or anything. Um, and then this is the actual clamp. So that clamp comes out. You have left and right helical, which is actually really nice and labeled correctly. And I have it set at a two degree left. And then these two uh, wire connectors actually rotate so you can have perfect adhesion on the wrap, which is pretty nice. A couple cool features at last chance. And you can do four fletch, you can do three fletch. What I'm actually gonna do this year is a three fletch. So I'm gonna do a three fletch and I'm not worried about anything because the X vein cut out in these black skies is a thicker material. It's a little bit bigger vein. I have a two degree helical. They've been absolutely fine. I've already been testing them and shooting them and they, they do really good. They steer, the, they steer really, really well. If I was running like a heat vein or something, I definitely wanna run a four fletch, um, especially if you're running fixed or shooting longer distances or something. But we're absolutely fine with this. Okay, I guess I already missed one step, um, but I got lucky with it. On the victories, there is this spine align mark right here. And what it's like pretty close with some testing that I've done. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, but it's really just a peace of mind. It makes sure that the spine is in the same spot of the arrow so that when you shoot, you have the same reaction out of the arrow every time and it's not one way or another coming out of the arrow. What I like to do is have the crease of the arrow wrap be in line with this spinal line. So I just got lucky. I totally forgot this step because I'm filming and I'm not paying attention, but it is lined up. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to spin the arrow. I'm gonna hold the knock in place. I'm gonna spin the arrow until that wrap line and that spinal line mark is where my fletching is gonna go. So I'm gonna fletch essentially my top fletching over the line of the seal of the wrap, just a better adhesion, just to make sure it doesn't accidentally get rippled up or anything. And that I shoot, every time I shoot my, in theory, spine is gonna be in the same spot every single time and get the same reaction. Okay, so we're gonna fletch one of these up. What I like to do on these is there's that little black line right there. So I will make sure that every single time I have the fletching run all the way to that right there. Then you wanna make sure that your fletching is all the way down in there. Another thing that I love uh, boning veins for is they don't really require any, um, uh, what are they called, starter? Primer. primer pens. They don't require primer pens. I don't know what it is about them, but I don't have to clean anything. I don't have to do anything. Literally, I just use their glue, put it on, and I don't have anything fall off ever. I, I hate primer pens, to be honest. Okay, so we got this glue here. And we're just going to do a couple dots all the way down. The biggest thing here is to make sure you have no air pockets. Air pockets are what allows the vein to, you know, get some water or air in there or whatever and start peeling or allow for that break to start. So a good light is really important. I'll just look up and down, make sure I got no air pockets in there. Always double check that your jig is clicked into place. Nothing worse than fletching when, you're click when your jig is not in place. And then on this last chance one, you come in here and you slide until it sticks like that. And then what I like to do is I like to grab and push it a little bit more just to make sure that it is 100% pushed in. I like to hold just for a couple seconds. You don't need a lot. And then you rotate and we got a perfect, you can see that right there. It's right over the seam there and there. So we got our top fletch right over that seam right in the spine aligned and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna do our next one, just do the same exact thing. Fletching arrows is very repetitive. I always err on the side of more glue than less glue. I don't mind if my arrow's a little bit messy and I just clean it up compared to not having enough glue, having a bunch of air pockets and it potentially falling off. But that's just me, I'd, I'd rather sacrifice some 
looks of it looking pretty than you know actual functionality. Okay. There we have one fletched arrow, and what I'm going to do now, get a piece of this paper towel over here. Always keep some paper towel on deck. I'm going to just take my index finger and some paper towel and just rub down. <clears throat> so a little bit of excess glue. And we have one perfectly fletched arrow. And another little final step that I'm going to do is we are going to put a dab of glue on each point of this fletching. And what that does is it helps the vein obviously stay on, but these are just kind of like the highest friction points. Like if it passes through a target or does something weird, it just kind of helps it from getting peeled up or getting, getting straggled on. But there we have it. That is the new Black Sky veins. Uh, they're now on the brollmerch.com, and this is what I'm gonna be running this year. So it's gonna be dope. Um, Next, we have our insert. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm lazy or what, but all I do now is I super glue these in because I know that this is my arrow setup, I'm not changing anything, and if I end up bending or breaking this arrow, good chance that it's toast. Um, you can do like a, like a quick melt sort of glue. I think this is actually an Easton glue. You can do a hot melt. This is a giant bar of hot melt. But if you are trying to do a more permanent thing, I would not recommend this blue melt because it is a super, uh, like a low heat melt. But if you are doing like uh, target points are good or maybe an arrow where you're gonna be kind of flexible and maybe change stuff in and out like inserts or, or something like that. I will just super glue this bad boy in because they are staying. That is all I need to do. So I'm just gonna put a little super glue. You can also use like, uh, there's this like black glue, this, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's also really, really good. Sort of any sort of like epoxy or whatever is, is gonna be absolutely fine. So press that down, wipe off a little bit of extra. And then what I'll do here just for a second is let it sit standing upright. And as I make all of them, I'll just kind of stand them up upright so that they just glue glue down, harden, and they don't slowly creep out because of air pressure or anything. So I, I normally make my dozen, stand them all up, and then by the time I'm done with my last one, my first one is, is done and ready to, to do whatever I need to do. So let's grab a tip real quick. I'll kind of run through these final specs. These are actually the new, or they're not new, but these are the boning little points. I've never really used them before, but I've been turned on to them and they are Actually fantastic, good little field tips. But we're gonna screw this on. See like it's already dry, that super glue dries so fast. And we'll get a final arrow weight here. So we're coming at uh, 429 grains, which is absolutely fantastic. I love like a 420, to 450 arrow. If I land right in there, I absolutely love it. This ain't ranch ferry over here. We like arrows that go fast and blow through things. And uh, I like short sight tapes. I like a large, um, large forgiveness of yardage to yardage. So I don't have to move my sight as far pretty much. If I go from 30 to 40, you know, I'm not gonna have to move it a ton. So this is my arrow setup. VAP, or no, not a VAP, a RIP TKO by Victory, 429 grains, three fletch with the new Black Sky Be Real veins, and I'm going to run this all season long. And what I probably will do, I just haven't yet, is I'll put in lighted knocks in all of these, and it might gain, you know, eight ounces or something like that, so we'll be sitting, you know, eight to ten ounces more right there, so another good little added extra weight, but there's this can kill everything in North America with 75 pounds. Let's actually do this. Let's shoot it through the chrono real quick. Okay, so we're gonna shoot this through the chrono real quick just to show you. This is 75 pounds. So we'll see where we're at here. <laughs> 300 feet per second. It's absolutely gonna blow through anything. Uh, I shot my moose with a very similar setup, just a four millimeter. And uh, yeah, everything under the sun is going to be absolutely fine.
pass through your city with this bad boy. So hope you guys enjoyed this arrow build. That is going to be what I'm going to be shooting this year. And our target is extra creaky. We will see you guys in the next one.